Hey, what is going on, everyone? It is Blue, and we are covering the Covenants once again, another night where we're just taking a look at these Covenants. Um, there has been a change specifically to Convoke of the Spirits, and that is a good one to talk about tonight because this one is pretty busted, um, and there has been a change to that one. So we're going to go ahead and take a look, first of all, of the changes that have just recently hit the beta environment. Um, so here we go. Moonfire has been increased for Feral Druids. This is a really good change. I don't know if I said this before, but I really did predict um, an additional Moonfire um, buff. Now, the reason because of that in our um, in our Covenant talent rows, um, there's an option to put a um, Ferocious Bite increases damage by 3% per bleed that's on the target. So pretty much our bites are going to be 9% extra damage. Now, with that ability alone it's just making that first talent row not even an option we're going to be going saber tooth just because we already know our bites are going to be doing so much damage we're probably also going to want sabers to do a little bit of damage you know run some mastery in our in our stats because this is going to be our build um, now it is really awesome with wizard to buff um, uh, moonfire again to possibly you know make our talents um other talents just a, a, an option for us. I don't think this will ever be a legitimate raid option, but I really do like that they are trying to make that um, a build. Rebirth here, um, not really a change. Mount form, shift into a uh, mount. Tra um, travel form instead of stags, we're going to have different type of travel forms. Pretty cool there. Berserk, this looks like it's more for um, bear, but Berserk did um, fall off the global cooldown, so we can use this like a Tiger's Fury Wood Prior, where we can kind of just cast it whenever, which is great. And then, of course, Convoke the Spirits. Call upon the Night Fae for an eruption of energy, channeling a Rapid Fury of not 16, but 12 Truth Spells. So we have a nerf of four spells. So that's pretty much what we're going to be talking about today. Um, if you guys have not watched my previous videos, we... Um, we pretty much talked about the Night Fae ability, the damage it did, and uh, you know how it compared to some of the other abilities. We are going to talk about that with this huge nerf. Now, I also want to clarify, I had to do some research of my own about how Convoke of the Spirits worked and how it functions. Um, because pretty much what we were doing is um, on my previous videos is we're reading the blue post and doing a lot of assumptions um, just off of that blue post. So I'm going to go ahead and just go over some of the things I've learned. Here you're going to see some tests that I've had to watch a video on. Really quickly, I do want to say um, I don't see many YouTubers going over the details of these abilities. I think it is a really huge benefit to Blizzard. Um, you know, if you guys can share some love, if any of you guys watch any of my videos or whatever, really share some love. I don't have beta access. If you want to throw beta access my way, it would make this research so, so much easier to really provide some good content, some good information, some clarity, as well as help you guys understand, you know, how things are working. Anyways, um, so what I've learned about Convoke of the Spirits. Convoke of the Spirits does cast spells that are not learned. Um, so if you are not specced into Moonfire, if you're running Sabretooth, um, you will cast Moonfire. Or there's, an, a, there's a possibility, right? It's all RNG. Possibility that you will cast Moonfire. Um, using this ability does not use energy. This is great. And, of course, we looked at it's nerfed by 12 instead, um, nerfed to 12 instead of 16. And it does generate combo points. That is kind of a nice buff to this that um, we could even use this as when we're oom um, on energy, and then we could just boom, get plenty of combo points, and just regen energy um, while we're doing so. Now, just want to clarify really quickly, the blue post was done on June 26. Now, the video where I got all this information, you know, come to these conclusions, was on July 23rd. So I'd have to assume a month later that all of these statements that were on the blue post were in effect for this video. Okay. So there are one, two, three, four casts um, that I went ahead and, and looked at, um, and I had to slow down the video a quarter. It was really nice. The individual's UI did was really helpful to see the thrashes, the moon fires, the bite. The individual was doing a PvP, and he had the um, PvP talent where bite reduces 
enemy's health so I could see when Bite was refreshed. So really good. I tried my best. There may be some Bite or some Shreds along the way that I didn't get because um, those are a little bit more difficult versus a Thrash where there's an animation, a Bite where there's a lunge and kind of uh, jerks down. You can hear the Bite um, and then Moonfire like the rest of those, those rips are um, trackable, right? Okay, so first one. Tiger's Fury was not pressed prior, so it was cast. Um, then there was a Bite, there was a Thrash, there was a Regrowth and a Moonfire, and then the individual was interrupted. Next one. Shred, shred Bite, moon, or Regrowth, Moonfire, Rake, Shred, individual died, so I was not able to see the rest of the channel. Excuse me. Now these ones are full channels. As you can tell here, I did not get the full 16 casts, unfortunately, um, but I did my best. So they're most likely filled in with um, shreds. Shred, Moonfire, Shred, Thrash, which was already buffed. So according to the blue post, we did not think this was going to happen. Then it regrowths, already buffed. There was already a regrowth stack on the individual prior to casting Kumoka the Spirits. Thread, Thrash again. I watched Thrash be refreshed. It was our, Thrash was already on the target. Then it was a brand new Thrash. And then I watched it refresh half a second later again. And then, then, and then it was a bite. And then there was a third thrash, you guys. This one sucks. You do not want to be thrashing three times in a row. You don't want to be regrowthing at all during your convoke. And this is with 16 casts, mind you. Now we only have 12. You're going to feel like crap if that's all you do is regrowth and thrash during your 12 casts. Um, next one was a shred, 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 just a whole bunch of shreds at the beginning. Bite, Moonfire, Rejuve, Shred, Bite, and Thrass, which was already buffed. So we're kind of coming to a conclusion. We're seeing here that that blue post, um, I don't want to say it's incorrect. Now, what I think they did is it's probably just a mathematical equation that they had to formulate. It says, hey, um, we want certain abilities to happen more often. We want to prioritize Shred. We want to prioritize Bite and Tiger's Fury. So most likely what they did is say, hey, Let's do Shred, make it happen 30% of the time, okay? Let's make Tiger's Fury happen 50% of the time if it is not buffed. If it is already buffed, let's say it happens 5% of the time. Because you'd still be getting a benefit to Tiger's Fury if it's already buffed because it would just be increasing your duration of the damage done, right? And instead of 50%, let's say it's 75%, um, you know, if not already buffed, because you do want to use it because you know it's going to buff your damage. So Boyzer wants us, wants that to be part of, wants it to be, you know, increasing your damage. So it's probably going to want to use it right away. Um, and we saw that by the very first cast. So let's say that. Um, let's say Bite is done like 20% of the time. Um, now the other abilities, let's say Thrash happens... 25% or let's say it's let's say it's 50% of the time if not already buffed and then if it is already buffed let's say it happens 10% of the time same thing with regrowth you know same thing with rejuve all these things that um you know it's not it's not going the percentages are lower for these other random abilities and higher for our cat abilities but we still have a random RNG chance to get these other ones. Not that it's not going to happen at all because we see a crap ton of thrashes happen, so we know that they are going to happen if they're if they're already um, on the target, but it's probably less of a chance. But anyways, it is completely RNG when you use this ability, you guys. Um, so with all that information said, I do want to go back to our very first video on our numbers. Um, we went ahead and crunched some numbers for 16 casts here. Um, and we, you know, predicted, said, hey, we can make it so it only shreds and bites. We came to a number of 45K, which competed with the curing ability, okay? We know now that this is not the case. This is not the case. It is completely RNG. It is a four-second channel time, which instead of just casting random stuff in that four seconds, you could probably do four or three abilities that you actually want to do. You know, of course, you're not, you know, you're going to have to spend the energy for them and blah, blah, blah. But those are four abilities that you know they're going to be, or three abilities that you know what they're going to be instead of this random RNG. So it kind of puts more favor now into the curing ability. <clears throat> so I think this damage is being cut by a lot. Now, what we did not include with this damage, though, was the talents. The talents for um, the selected covenants. 
Now, the Night Fae, what the Night Fae has going for it is it does the, the, first of all, the Covenant does do pretty good damage, but what it has for it is really strong talent options. The Night Fae have the strongest talents in the game as far as Covenants. Let me read you this one. Or um, as far as for Feral, we benefit you know quite a bit by the ones that they're giving for Feral. Um, so let's say healing and damage done has a chance to grant you a stack of redirected anima up to 10. Activating your Night Fae class ability grants you 1% maximum health and 2% increased mastery per stack for 30 seconds. Now this, it seems as if it would have some gameplay behind it. You know, it's like, hey, I kind of want to wait for my 10 stacks before I pop Convoke of the Spirits because I know if there's a random bite in there, it's going to be buffed by 20% mastery. Now for Feral Druids, mastery and bites are beautiful. They go together perfectly, you guys. Um, this is really going to boost our damage as well as any bleeds. It's going to help a little bit, but mostly just really just getting some huge bites through. Currently in the video watched, I don't know if this is currently on live. Like I said, the video was July. Um, this did not work as intended. The individual, I watched it, the individual had three stacks of Grove Invigoration. When he cast Convoke of the Spirits, that three automatically went to 10. So, busted. Casting in, uh, Convoke of the Spirits automatically, instead of 6% um, mastery, just went totally to 20% without any actions other than pressing the button. So that was just crazy broken. Um, but you're going to see here, this is a very strong ability to have. And then, of course, we have this individual which says your damage is increased by 10% to targets above 75%. This is this is also pretty strong, especially in raid environments where for progression, you might be doing a lot of time on a boss over 75%. Um, um, or maybe they have some shields and blah, blah, blah. This can be pretty strong, you guys. Compared to the other ones, these ones are really good. Now, what I want to say here is I don't think the Night Fae is going to be the only option or the best option. Now, I think what we need to look at is this is the beta environment. Things are going to change. Instead of saying like, hey, let's jump Night Fae, let's jump Kyrian, let's jump blah, blah, blah. I think the biggest picture that we need to have in our head is Blizzard has intended uses. They are not coming out and saying, um, this is what we think, this is what the Night Fae should be, this is what the Kyrian should be, and blah, blah, blah. But from my understanding, from reviewing all the covenants for Feral, there did there was some clear pictures, right? Um, from my understanding, it's like, hey, we have a clear PvP one. You know, we have a clear dungeon one. I don't know if that one is, is the same for other classes, but it looks like we have a dungeon one. It looks like we have a raid one, um, a raid slash assisting your raid members one. Now, what doesn't fit the picture is we don't really have one for Night Fae. What is the Night Fae ability? I'm going to further investigate the other classes to see if I can get a clearer picture, but what if the Night Fae is just PvE content, just world content? You know, hey, you know, we're just going to give you a lot of burst just randomly, really quickly, in case you need to nuke down, you know, um, a world boss or something that's not going to be up too long or whatever. Maybe that's what the Night Fae is, and that we just need to realize that, and then realize that, hey, Blizzards are going to you know, continue to change the numbers, um, you know, the more they test the beta environment and such like that. But if we have an understanding of that, we're not gonna we're not gonna have to jump through these hoops. Oh, this one's strongest, this one's strongest, now this one's strongest, and just figure out the, like Blizzard says that Carrion is the raid one and that Night Fae is PV uh, just world content. So I just know that when um, when live comes out that they're probably going to fix this so that this is not the the raid one, that this one is not as strong as the Carrion. Um, so just look forward to those videos. I will probably do an investigation about that and hopefully I can come to a conclusion. But hopefully this was enough. This is a huge nerf, you guys. Huge nerf to convoke the spirits. There is going to be a change. I am voting for Kyrian. I really like it. That's the very fate that's my favorite covenant. Not because of what it looks like and stuff, because I'm not really a big fan of that. Um, but it looks like it's gonna be the most fun, and I do like the aspect of you know doing a lot of damage slash assisting my raid members. That kind of intrigues me. Um, so let's cross our fingers for that. I'll give you guys more updates, but thanks as always for tuning in. Take it easy, everyone.
Peace.